In the history of the studio, we've always built our own engine, and it's something that it can be a blessing and a curse. It's slower to get up and running in the project because everything has to be built up from scratch, but you have much more control over how the engine is kind of accomplishing the goals of the games and, and IP you're making. It's always been important for us to have our own technology at Ready at Dawn because we have a vision of what we want the game to be and where we want the story to go, but we also have a vision of where we want the technology to go. So when you're starting a new engine, what you try to do is you try to build on something else that either that's experience, another engine entirely, or in our case, we had a PSP working engine. On the PSP, it's how do we make it smaller? How do we kind of condense it? How do we streamline it? On the PS4, everything is how do I make it bigger? How do I make it faster? How do I make it more in your face? My feeling was that for this generation, a, a big distinguishing factor was gonna be just how much more alive a game level should feel. We want every part of it to look like it, it belongs and feels kind of real and lifelike. We want it to look like it's a real living, breathing environment. And there's, there's a lot of parts to that. Whether it's smoke, things blowing in the wind, everything that is moving in the game interacts volumetrically and correctly with the air in the environment. When our characters are standing there and you know the wind is blowing and you get this the coat flapping in, in a physically correct manner, whether you even understand why it looks better than you've seen before. It just registers, you know. The, the player doesn't know why, but it looks better. It looks more realistic. It's taken a lot of time and a lot of effort, but we've started to get, you know, really realistic movement to the cloth. You see how they move, you see how they behave, you see how they feel, how they respond to light differently. And so a lot of that was a ton of research into period accurate material. For every like little, you know, glint on a material or things like that, every bit of texture, we actually, we scan lots of textiles to get that sort of real world look embedded into our materials. And so that was actually kind of challenging is finding those materials in today's societies because we, we have a lot of synthetic materials now. Using a 3D scanning process, we took reams and reams of these kind of historically accurate textiles and digitized them you know, down to sub millimeter precision, which just has all the imperfections and also artistry that is really hard to kind of simulate from scratch. We actually have specialized cloth shading technology to make it look right and sit well in the scene and make it so that when you see it, it just looks like cloth and it doesn't look like a, like a plastic tarp wrapped around the guy. We really put a huge investment in terms of our material model and the lighting that reveals it. Those, those two things really go hand in hand. I think over the last five years, um, the industry both the you know, movie industry and the, the gaming industry has kind of transitioned into a more like physically accurate lighting model. So game lighting tends to be very kind of forward diffuse lighting versus kind of glancing and getting the variation in wetness and sheen in material properties. So instead of having full on direct lights that just illuminate the full face of a character, you have glancing lights that are catching kind of imperfections and implying form. We've spent a lot of time getting a good volumetric look to our lighting and our fog systems so that it can really, it creates a kind of mood and atmosphere. The world we're in, especially you know, foggy London, fluid and fog and these dense atmospheres and grime and soot are all very difficult anomalies to actually model. Even London today, you know, the, the fog is a common element. But if you look at the industrial revolution, it's like you had fog and you had booming industry, you had soot, you had pollution. It was almost like another character in our world. Yeah, I think in the past, uh, games kind of used fogs to clip out draw distances because they couldn't render as much. And so they just said uh, they'd bring the fog plane in and maybe on PCs, if you had a really boss video card, you could crank that dial back up and you could see further and further. And now we're using it to accent the world and some of the players to really get the life and the feeling of everything there. It gives it this kind of living, breathing, immersive quality that actually gives more depth to the world because it's so integral to making the characters and world feel cohesive and of that, that place in time. When there's a certain tone in the story, a lot of it doesn't just come from what the characters say or even just from the actors and their motion capture. A lot of it comes from the environment. It comes from the lighting and sort of the atmosphere. Any one thing seems kind of inconsequential, but as you see the, the meticulous kind of research and all those little details add up, the overall experience is something that conveys that level of detail. I don't think there's a single element that we're like, well, let's not go there because the hardware's not powerful enough. It was really, it was the door was open in any field, and we were like, okay, well, let's try to innovate as many fields as possible. Really, the limit is not the technology anymore. It's not, certainly not the platform. You can do anything. Like, you can really set out a kind of a blank slate and say, what do we want to do differently? What do we think is really 
key to this new generation of hardware. Which to the end user and to the game and to the gamer means that we are giving them the best experience that we can. We're giving them the most physics that we can, the most graphics that we can, the most animation and AI work. And so what we're able to do is we're able to tailor each of those systems to maximize the hardware, to give them the best outward experience. Because now we're doing stuff that wasn't before possible. You have a truly cinematic, immersive, you know, experience with characters that you care about, with environments that, you know, blow your mind, that look so painterly and so beautiful and so interesting that you actually want to spend time in that world. Stay vigilant, all of you. We can expect hot work here. This is for the players.